And I don't think people are having it easy in America, in in the UK, no. There, there's potential, there's a lot of room for improvement, but I'll still choose Ghana any day. Hi, it's your girl Koriwa and today I'm doing something totally different. Not too long ago, many of you reached out to me after I did the mini tour video of my house that I built here in Ghana, asking if I bought my decor pieces here in Ghana or whether I brought them from overseas. At the same time, many of my people who are looking to relocate to Ghana have also requested that I do more videos covering the topic of doing business in Ghana. So today, I'm going to be killing two birds with one stone. I'm talking to a lovely business lady, Anita, from Deco Zone whom you can get your beautiful deco pieces to finish your houses here in Ghana from. At the same time, she'll be letting us in on the business terrain here in Ghana. So kindly show me some love by liking this video right now. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And now let's go. Thank you for talking to me today, Anita. Can I start by asking who is Anita? Anita is um, a mother of three, a wife, and um, I'm an entrepreneur as well. I love what you've done with DecoZone. I think you've got something marvelous going on here. So tell me, are you Ghanaian born and bred? I'm Ghanaian born, bred and lived overseas in the past. So I've studied um, overseas. I've studied abroad in the past. You know, Anita, moving back myself, a lot of my friends in Australia told me that I was making a mistake moving to Ghana. And now that I've been here, a lot of Ghanaians are telling me that I was crazy to have moved down here. So why did you do it? Why did you move to Ghana? Um, given back. I went to acquire knowledge. I went to learn something. So I felt the need to come back home, definitely, to help with um, business at home. How easy or difficult was it for you to assimilate back into the Ghanaian way of life? Very difficult. Very difficult. I must say, um, at some point, I, I actually considered moving back because you know how it is. It's experiencing, you know, a different world, an entirely different world from what we have here. But you need a lot of resilience and determination to stay. So... I'm here. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Okay, so what's the story behind DecoZone? Okay, so um, um, I come from a family, a business background. So doing business is something that I've, I've kind of done my whole life or I've seen, I've been privy to experience mm. it. So, and I love Deco. I have a passion for interior design. I love beautiful things. So coming back home, I felt there was a gap in the market for an industry like that. So that is one of the main reasons behind starting DecoZone. Yeah, you're right. And I think you're feeling this gap in the market because you've got really beautiful pieces in here, I must say. Okay, so Anita, tell me, how long has DecoZone been in operation for and what sort of products and services do you offer? So Deco Zone is almost three years old. We, we are into everything um, interior decor. So we offer from your wall um, hangings, paintings, rags, everything that would, you know, beautify your space, your homes, your offices, Deco Zone has to offer. So here we have some decor pieces, just decor accessories, tray, vanity trays, bases, some pampas grasses. We also have some artificial or full potted plants, orchids in pots, all these here. Here we have some of our mirrors, console tables, um, accent chairs. We have center tables, coffee tables. This is where you find all of those. And then we have floating shelves also here on the wall so if you want to declutter it's one of the best ways to actually do so you can place beautiful stuff in them on your walls over here we have some more vases or vases and um decorative ones we also have placemats in various kinds designs we have square type we have round placemats we also have depo books or you call full books for decorating your spaces. We have gift boxes, 
and then we do also um, smart products so we have some smart switches and lights pots purees shelves pillows whichever way you want to call them but in different forms designs and you actually need someone to decorate your space we actually do move as well we give interior decor tips also in store if you visit us most times people want to start a business in ghana but they're thinking oh i need to have this much money or i need to start very big so what is your experience how big or small did you start this um, business should i say small or big <laughs> um i think it's relative but mainly because as i said we already have a business a family business that we run i would say i had a bit of an advantage getting to start this wing of the business so um we started small when i say small meaning that we started not directly importing products into the country what we used to do is so I actually run the business along with my husband and so what we, we started off by doing was um sourcing locally and um, we got to realize that look people actually like these kind of products so that's that's how we started would you say there's a need in Ghana for the products and services that you offer? Definitely. We started with furniture, sourcing from various, some of the big shops in Ghana. And um, people came in and actually liked the setup whenever we did setups. They liked it. So we decided, why not? We already have the channel. The lines are open. So why not bring them in by ourselves? I always say the internet has its good and bad. And one of the good that is as it's offered is our, our ability to see we are able to see all these nice things on in our palm we have access to pinterest we have access to instagram and all that where most of these products that we sell are displayed so definitely people see and they want to have it so why not give it to them if we already you know are into the business did you always know that you would grow up to become an entrepreneur or did you fancy yourself in a different uh, career I don't know, I used to fancy the way the United Nations, you know, how they were, the people who worked as secretaries, you know, speaking or translating. I took French classes, but I, I don't speak French. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Yeah, so I actually wanted to be a bilingual secretary, whatever that is now. <laughs> I've spoken to some other business people recently and one of the, the their main issues in doing business in Ghana is the marketing aspect, the marketing side of things. Um, it, it, it can get a bit expensive to get eyeballs on your business is what I've been told. What, what's your experience in that? What's your experience with that? We actively market the business. I, I mean, in this day and age, you can't just sit down and fold your arms. Um, so DecoZone has been built purely on data marketing platform where we've used social media like Facebook, Instagram, um, Snapchat to reach our target audience. Primarily because of our location, it's a bit difficult to find Deco products on our side of town where Kaswa. So I mean, when you think about Deco, readily you're not thinking about coming to this side of town. So when we started DecoZone, it was very important for us to choose wisely our, our platform. So we used social media. And aside that, over time, you know, social media is always evolving. So we also have to adapt other ways. We actually go out. We try to do some adverts on radio to get people to see us. So, so here we have our station, our data marketing station where we deal with all the inquiries that come on our social media handles so if you call someone or you send us a message on ig we have a team here who is responding putting together your products or the items to be shipped out to you we are trying to utilize all marketing avenues and channels oh lovely so let's talk about your customers who is your target market um i'd say if you you have or you live in a home rented house once you live in a home you have a, you're in an office space in the hospital a school decor is actually needed in all these places they have ways of relieving stress so our, our kind of market is almost every working class people students it's quite wide so it's not really limited once you you, you have yourself in a space you should actually decorate the space to suit your personality also or what you do.
So how, how do you source your products for the business and how difficult is it working with the dreaded Ghana customs? So we source, we have different places we source our products from. We have, we do um, business in China, in Turkey, in Dubai, um, in South Africa. So these are all channels that we bring um, product, products from. Dealing with customs in Ghana is, is difficult. I mean, if you've had any experience with them, you know that there's not really a standard. Things keep changing every now and then. We have different laws that are being used against you. So really, it's not that straightforward. It's, it's been challenging. But I must say that things are getting better from when we started. Uh, things are getting better. So... So say I was after a particular showpiece which you don't stock here in, in your shop. Are you able to procure it specifically uh, for me at a fee or any other customer at a fee? Yes, um, we are able to do that because um, sometimes people have different preferences and it isn't everything that you can stock. So we do import, uh, we, we order for some clients. So definitely we do customized service here. It's always hard when you've lived overseas or not necessarily lived overseas, but when you're a visionary and you're trying to get somewhere, you want to establish a business and get somewhere. It's always hard to get other people to, to, to see what you see and do things the way you would want it to be done. What has your experience been? That, that has been one of my greatest challenges, actually. Our greatest challenges has been working with local artisans. Sometimes um, the difficulty is getting them to understand the vision, what exactly it is that you're trying to do. To be honest, some of the products that we actually um, import, we can make them locally. You understand? Sometimes it's sad to, you know, have to bring everything from abroad, but people do not take or pay attention to details. So that has been one, one, one of the some of one of the challenges that we have had in, in you know dealing with artisans in general. So how easy is it to to do business in Ghana? You know what challenges do you face doing business in Ghana? Yeah, there are difficulties in in doing business almost everywhere, not just in Ghana. But for me, one of the things that stand out. Our fluctuation in in um, exchange rates it's a challenge it's a problem you sometimes import things as an importer it's a huge challenge because you import things at a certain rate and by the time you are run out of goods or you run out of the goods and you need to re-import dollar has either changed the rates has changed duty charges have changed so there's a, a lot of inconsistency in that, which affects our pricing and even how, you know, generally our price. What challenges do you face, especially being a woman entrepreneur, you know? Is it smooth sailing? Being a woman entrepreneur in Ghana, um, I think we are, Ghanaians are embracing the fact that women can also be in the same space. You can also be entrepreneurs. Yes, we do. I do personally face, you know, I have challenges sometimes with men feeling that, you know, it's like uh, they don't really get it. But um, people are starting to embrace it. So it's really not as much a problem as it was before. So you've lived overseas and now you've moved to Ghana. So if you were given the choice or the opportunity, would you rather live overseas or Ghana is where it's at? I'll choose Ghana. I, I, I still believe that there's a whole lot we can give and we are still growing you know what 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 best than to be a part of something that is growing we are evolving it's not it's not easy to be very honest it's not easy but then again i don't think people are having it easy in america in in the uk no but th there's potential there's room a lot of room for improvement but i'll still choose ghana any day. I find that whenever you want to start a business in Ghana, not all the time, but most of the time, if you start, want to start a business in Ghana and it's not exactly what people are already used to, you get a lot of people telling you why that business won't work. So starting out, did you get people telling you that this is not possible to do successfully in Ghana? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
I've actually had someone walk in store and ask Nanyema we yede yede. It's it's a process, it's gradual. People are getting to understand, people are getting to embrace it. For the kind of products that we sell, I wouldn't say they are basic essentials, they are more of luxuries, but they add up to life, you know. When you have a room that's it's bare, you walk back from work or you get into your home and you you realize that there's something missing because you go into all these hotels, you go into meetings and you see nice beautiful artwork, they add up to something, that is why they are there. So if you can have access to it in your own home, why not? So Anita, are there any positives to being a business person? So one of the nice things about being an entrepreneur is I feel you get to give yourself because for me, it is something that I am passionate about, as in what I do. Deco is something I am passionate about, and I love business. I'm a cool woman, so I actually love business as well. <laughs> but I, not just any business, I'm passionate about Deco. I want to see places looking nice. I always have issues when I go to... Look, I've become too alert now. It's like when I go to places, like, why don't you just have a small plant? You know, and, and doesn't need, you don't need to break the bank in order to have some of these things. So it is the passion, it's the passion that, you know, drives me. I've just got to ask this question. Would you advise someone currently living overseas to start a business in Ghana in absentia? You know, they're not here themselves. They bring money to their family members and they expect the business to flourish. And, you know, what, what do you think? Should people start businesses in absentia when they're not actually here? No, um, you know, the way our system is, the way, you know, you're dealing with people, you're dealing with a lot of things. So honestly speaking, if you want to do business in Ghana, you can actually give yourself some time, establish it, you know, to your taste, to exactly what you want people to, to buy into. And, um, you can go in and out, but to say that you're starting a business and living abroad, trust me, I, I wouldn't advise. I mean, not to say that I'll write it off, but I, I wouldn't advise. Because even sitting by it and, you know, running it, it's not that easy. <laughs> in Ghana, staffing is one of the most difficult aspects of doing a business. What is your biggest challenge in the areas of you know employees it's definitely an issue um retention turnover it's difficult sometimes to get people to understand the vision you have for your business and um the setup in terms of um the the type of people you are employing there's a lot of work in that area to be done to get the right kind of people to work in an SME. Sometimes it's getting the people to actually understand your vision and um, to embrace it. But I have amazing stuff anyway. <laughs> but um, yeah, people, sometimes people don't really get the whole working. They don't understand what it is to be an employee. Um, what we, we try to do, and we, only can, we can only try to do that, we try to create um, an environment where it's all inclusive, where you feel that you are not just a staff, you are not just um, an employee, but a part of the business and a part of the growth and success of the business. We try to train them, we try to um, teach them as much as we can. Doing business, you have to always also update yourself. So we do a lot of um, um, reading all these videos that we have to, you know, learn from to be able to also um, get them to understand us in the, in the best way. So, basically. Ghana has 199 problems when it comes to starting a business. Starting a business in Ghana is not child's play. We've had people come to Ghana, start businesses and fail and then move back. So you are doing something obviously right, but has it always been smooth sailing? I'm here. I'm doing it. In the middle of all the challenges. I just got a call about today's rate. <laughs> Changing. Yesterday was different. If I yesterday was 6.3 something, all of a sudden it's 6.42. I can't pack my bags and leave, so I'll still tell you that it's still worth it, you know. Yeah. 
So how can customers uh, reach you? People who want to buy your products to make their homes beautiful. A lot of people overseas are currently building in Ghana. So, and there are some people who just want to leave the whole process to you to just come in and decorate the, their spaces for them. So how can such people, you know, people that want, want you to decorate for them or people that want to buy pieces from you, how can they reach you? Okay, so we are very active on social media on Instagram. You can check us our store out on Instagram. Our handles are Decazone GH on Instagram, on Facebook, on Snap, and the, the one I'm learning, TikTok crowd, we are there. <laughs> and uh, we are located at Wager near the West Hills Mall. That's the, the closest landmark is the West Hills Mall. And just a call away. 0243790324. You can call us on that. So, if there's any business advice that you have for uh, my subscribers, you know, people that want to move to Ghana and start a business, what would that advice be? Hmm. I'm sure I have a lot to say. You have a dream, you are passionate about it, just start. Don't, don't, don't wait. Don't waste time. Just start. As for the problems, as for the challenges, it isn't only here in Ghana. Everywhere you go, you'll find challenges, you'll find difficulties. And try to overcome complaint. Try to overcome excuses. For me, I feel that that is one of the best ways to go about it. Overcome excuses, complaints, and be a problem solver. Look at the end. And you'll be good. If you've enjoyed this chit chat with Anita, then show some love by liking this video. Leave me a message in the comment section below if you'd like to see me do more videos like this one. Again, Anita's shop Deco Zone is located near the West Hill Malls in Wija. So be sure to visit the store for all your deco needs. Anita, thank you for taking the time to talk to me.